Hello guys, Nato Ace here, and this one's going to be my impression of Hero for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Fighter Pass Volume 1, Fighter Pack Number 2. So of course, surprisingly, the leaks were true, Square Enix character is going to be in Smash Brothers, so beside Cloud, now you have Hero or a Hero from Dragon Quest XI. Some extent. So the default hero is the Luminary from, like I said, Part 11. But there was some a lot of rumor that it was going to be someone else. But again, <laughs> but you know what? It, it's kind of close to the lead. So before I give my impression and what hero's abilities are, who is the hero that was shown on the trailer and the default character in Smash Brothers Ultimate? Hero is from the 11th installment of Dragon Quest, the elusive age. And the story is that at a young age, the hero was destined to save the world from darkness. And he has the power of light. Thus, his title is called The Luminary. Yes, yes, like. It doesn't really like what the actual name is, so people just say either Eleventh is one of his names by default. Some even just say Luminary because it's the Luminary. But of course, they're kind of weird to say Luminary, the Luminary, but just what people call him either Eleventh, Luminary, but he has no real name, kind of like Joker. And he, when it comes to age, he's supposed to save the kingdom. He's supposed to go to this particular kingdom beat the king and start his duty to save the world. That is what the Luminary is. But of course down the line something happened, there was an anomaly and for strange reason the Luminary is considered bad luck in that world and now the knights from that kingdom trying to stop him to some extent even erase him. And for a while he's going to be on the run until let's just say later on you'll be surprised with the plot twist. But that is who Hero is. The Luminary. However, the surprise Easter egg here is that you don't get to play just Luminary. You do actually play other Dragon Quest heroes in the game. Granted, they're only skin swap, kind of like Bowser Jr. with a trainer. Heck, even Olimar. You get, believe it or not, you can actually play as Alb from Pikmin 3. Just go on that game. And you get the idea there. So, yeah, so Luminary is just one of the heroes, but there is actually a three. So the other three are the hero from Dragon Quest VIII, Dragon, and another one from Dragon Quest IV, and the famous one that kind of resembles Goku, Erdrick from Dragon Quest III. So I'm going to try to give a bit brief history about those characters, because I kind of know I played their games, but... It's been a long time, so I'm gonna start with a hero from Dragon Quest VIII that kind of resembles Goku. Because if you don't know, Dragon Quest character design was designed by Akira Toriyama. So in Dragon Quest VIII, he's actually a personal guardsman for a king to a powerful kingdom. But then it was a curse, and the king became a troll, and he has a daughter that became a horse again. Yes, I know it's spoiler territory, but you can understand that this game is old, so apologies if, if I spoil that to you if you never played Dragon Quest VIII, but that's what it is. And he's in a journey to find a spell that can break the curse and then he deals with other people, so that's what it is. Part 4 mostly is that the world is in trouble and each of the characters, they have their own problem, however, they, and you think, oh man, they're gonna be like, well, are they gonna make it or are they in big trouble? What are we gonna do? Until a hero arrives and somehow this hero in part four, and again, his name is Solo. And for part eight, the character is eight. Again, you get it. I don't know. Is that this hero destiny is to fix all the problem and you know, it's like a fixer and stop, stop the, you know, the bad guys. Just do that one. Like, I didn't finish the game yet. And definitely, I never played this one, and Dragon Quest 3, and his name, I know there's a lot of names, I think someone said 3, 3 at one point, but mostly they call him 
Erdrich, yes, Erdrich. Uh, if it's a famous title only handled by like the greatest hero knight you, you can say. So believe it or not, Dragon Quest 3 is actually the very first game in the timeline, and it goes to one and two. And Erdrich, the one that really looks like Goku, is a legendary hero. And his story is he teams up with other heroes and beat the bad guy. I mean, freaking, it's, it's a Famicom, it's an NES game, it's old, so... I mean, you can get the game on the Switch, which is a mobile version on the Switch, but, you know, whatever. Dragon Quest, like I said, I'm a more Final Fantasy guy than a Dragon Quest, but that's what Erdrick is. He's the most famous character that a lot of people want. There was a rumor that he was going to be considered the default character for Dragon Quest, but no. So, the bottom line is, yes, you get to play as four different characters, they're all just palette swap, but you can either play as a Luminary, 8, Solo, or Urdra. So those are who are the characters for Dragon Quest, the world of Dragon Quest there. So, the moves. Do they live up to what the game is? And of course, Dragon Quest is a very, very JRPG, your old school one, so it does a lot, a lot of spells. So, yeah, so what does Urdric or luminary or hero has when it comes to moves for Super Smash Bros. So first of all, his uh, neutral is called Frizz. Yeah, so a lot of his moves are spells. Spells and skills, again, based on the game itself. So like I said, neutral is Fizz, but you can actually charge it up to Fizzle and Carvizzle. So again, it's kind of like their version of Fire, Fira, and Viagra. Yeah. And what it is, is it's just a range fireball, yeah. fireball move. <laughs> fireball, fire element move, you get it. So, heroes are special. It's called Whoosh, which is actually a wind element attack. And of course, if you charge it, Whoosh, the Whoosh, again, yeah, same goes, it's like wind one. Or like arrow, era, eroga something like that and then just like Joker sadly his side special is another just an attack rather than kind of help you move forward that can reach the platform and it's called zap I get a lightning move and it shoots lightning so you got fire move which is special but and then you got lightning also so zap zapple can zap lightning and then of course you hold it down you get stronger what it is is just in the game, it's a forward slash. So now, the infamous about this character and why people to some don't like this person is <sighs> Hero is known for the king of random number generated. What it is is every time he does a spe uh, down special, there's a command selection. So again, in the style of an RPG when you do a command because again the game is a uh, an actual turn-based JRPG with command list. So every time he uses a B-down, he basically does like he think what moves he wants to use. And there's a lot of moves that comes out. So he has like ah, to do some move. And some of them are very, very controversial. So and here are some of the moves I'm gonna mention and which ones will be like very comfortable, comfortable. And some of the moves are interesting and some of them are very controversial. So first, oof. Basically, it's a buff, stat buff. He gets powered up, but his defense goes down. Snooze makes people go to sleep. I understand that. Bounce is a reflection for any projectile, so it's kind of like him as Fox and Wolf and Falco. They do their B down, reflect stuff. Flame Slash is a forward slash sword attack. So forward slash flame effect. <laughs> Again, you already have a fire move that's neutral, but then you got this one. And then crackle slash is a ice slash move. So when you hit it with it, there's vice. Kalank is, believe it or not, you turn yourself metal. So when someone trying to attack you, yep, well, you're invincible for a while. Zoom is automatically you go back this way uh, to the stage. It's especially when you're about to fall in, if you're lucky enough to get zoom, boom, you go back to the stage. In, in the game itself, it's a map thing to see where you are. Kamikaze. 
It's a move that's gonna kill you, however, if somebody is close enough, they can also get killed. <laughs> a controversial move there because it's a one hit wonder there. This is another type of fire projectile. I think in the game itself was like both hits because it's so weird that there's like it's only for one person or only a group or everyone. I mean, again, trying to be different than Final Fantasy. Sizzle is a projectile flame that you shoot forward and up at the same time. I have no idea. Psychop is apparently his knockback attack gets strong. Again, another buff. Heal, yes, it heals your percentage. <laughs> yes, he can heal himself. Other characters don't unless you find either food, you know, like a maxim tomato or a fairy bottle. <laughs> yeah, so another move. Accelerato. He speeds up. Again, another buff. Bang! It's a explosion that's actually strong enough to knock people out. Kaboom! Stronger than <laughs> Bang again. Boom! Gets pushed back. Hatchet Man, a strong slice attack that actually can do critical hit. Again, critical hit. Whack or twack. Oh, this is the most infamous, the infamous move that people hate and why people sometimes hate this guy with his RNG. Whack or twack. If you hit someone, it's an instant KO. The game itself, it's an instant death. That's what it is. It's it's a death move, that's what it is. And surprisingly from what I heard, a lot of people who play Hero actually can get this like, like, um, <laughs> it's not like a rarity, it's like, it's actually like once in a while and then boom, there you go. Whack, and then the guy's done. And then, a move that can counter anyone who's metal and especially Kalang. Metal Slash. Yes, any opponent, especially if you turn yourself uh, as a hero, turn metal. You hit with this move, your instant kill with your metal. So, finally, a character that has something to do with anti metal again, just him. Hocus Pocus, it's a random effect that basically think of it as uh, in Pokemon. Um, what is that move? Ah, crud, there's a move that when you use it, you see some fingers. Shoot, I forgot what it is, but it is a random move. Uh, I forgot what it is, I do apologize for it. Ah, dang it. Oh, whatever. Magic Burst is... He uses all of Hero's MP. And then the higher the MP, the moves get stronger. And then... Kaboom! Again, they can actually go fast. And then, of course, his final smash is Giga Slash. Yes, so... Hero's final smash is called Giga Slash. It's where he... Basically, summon all the heroes from past games, so that's what it is. As for the stage for Hero, it's called Yggdrasil Altar, which is in the game itself. It's somewhere halfway of the game, yeah, a bit of a spoiler there. You go to the sacred tree to improve your sword, well, to basically get some sort of sort of light, but of course, something happened, and then the second half of the game, well, let's just say it turns to the dark side. So, but the difference is that in the game itself, you just, you go there, and then there's a story, and then Act 2. Let's just go with that one. But with that said, in the game itself, really, is that what Sakurai did was, it's a moving platform, but not so much such as Skyward Loft, or Delfino Plaza, or heck, even New Donk City. This one is just a sort of like a tour around the world of Dragon Quest XI. So the background doesn't really do anything. You don't go to different area. It's just you go around the world of Dragon Quest XI, starting with the Yggdrasil Sacred Tree, and then all the way like, you're gonna see the sea, the desert. I mean, the map of well, like I said, Dragon Quest XI. So that's it. And what it is is that there will be like mini platform on the side. It'll change a bit of the landscape the moving platform and once in a while you'll see a mimic box so that's one of the hazards is the mimic box of course like I said sometimes mini platform kind of change the dynamic yeah there will be also cameo of slime and spirit talk which is again part of the game I'm not gonna really go in detail about those are so but that's what it is the seal altar not so like hazard dynamic than the memento but 
looking into a 60 frame for the world of Dragon Quest 11. It's kind of interesting. So, you gotta notice when I give those lists, that's the problem with Hero. So, his beatdown is called Command, but it the command list changes all the time. Sometimes you might get lucky. You get the most powerful moves such as Kazi, Twack, Magic Burst that can actually instant KO people. So that is a downside and why people don't like him. However, there is some strength and weakness about this hero. So I'm gonna give my thoughts about hero. He's basically Meteor, it's just a guy in other with a sword with magic spell. However, like I said before, if you notice, Hero actually has an engage. His moves are required a use of his MPK, so if you ran out of magic, tough luck, just like a real RPG there. And you're gonna have to rely on that one, so you might just, oh I can just spam it. No, you can't spam move, that's the thing, so you gotta be careful with it. And in order to basically get it back, is either, I think you just block, I think it goes recharge back from what I heard, but I know attacking other opponent will do it. And like I said, it doesn't really, I mean, does he have good recovery? Well, his whoosh move does help him actually recover. And again, if you're lucky and if your RNG is on your side, believe it or not, guess what? If you get the move uh, zoom, yeah, instantly you're going to go back to the stage with no problem there. So again, that's why people don't like it because it's very, very random. And for a while, people didn't want to ban this character. So again, like uh, good is has a lot of arsenal. Bad is you don't rely on MP that much, and unless that your RNG is very good luck or heck big luck, you not might get the move that you need, especially that down command. So you can't really rely that on that much with it. But again, a lot of people say it's still too random, shouldn't be in the tournament. But of course they said nah, it's just not that good. I mean, not a lot of people really use hero, but yeah, it's just funny. But it is what it is. I mean, he's a really old school JRPG character there. So, would I recommend people playing this guy? Unless you like Dragon Quest, again, I'll go back to just like Joker. For somebody like, mm, is this a good character for function wise? Is he fun to play? Not so much, sadly. Uh, yes, he's not as fast as Joker. He is a bit strong. His moves can help him recover and actually good arsenal. However, you do have to rely on two things. You gotta keep an eye on his M gauge, his MP gauge. And then the second one is his down special command. You gotta make sure that you know what skill that you're gonna use. And again, it's random generated. Especially also, somebody who's not into Dragon Quest, you might get confused, you might not even use it. And to some extent, also, a problem is when you're gonna play this character international language barrier because of English, Japanese, whatever language. That's also kind of like uh, a problem for Hero is that you gotta require to understand the language too, so that's the downside. So, would I recommend people trying Hero out? Uh, unless you like JRPG, you like a hero type character with a sword, with magical arsenal, go for it. But for someone who doesn't like anything random, yeah, this is probably not the character for you. So that's my thoughts, my impression of Joker. So the next one's gonna be Crash Bandicoot, a big surprise. A character that people wouldn't think would be possible, but it's possible. And like I say, for this character, I think most people are gonna like this guy than Hero or Joker. So with that, I'll see you guys later.